Salut, c'est Lyon, bienvenue dans cette nouvelle vidéo. So in my previous videos, I've received a lot of questions about moving averages. So I think it would be very interesting to actually study moving averages, look at different types of moving averages and to actually explain which ones I personally use and really understanding the difference there is between the different types of moving averages. Now, before going any further, I really want to say that a moving average is a indicator based on price, okay? It's an indicator based on price and it is not a strategy, okay? So we're not going to talk about moving average crossovers, you buy when it crosses, you sell when it crosses. All of this, keep that out of your mind, okay? There is no trading strategy so simple as two lines cross, you buy two lines cross, you sell only, okay? It would be way too easy and it would be something coded by robot, okay? You would never do that as a manual trader. So. I know many beginner traders think this is potentially the holy grail of finding that indicator, finding the moving average which will allow you to become profitable by trading crossovers, but this is just not the case, okay? As I said, moving average is an indicator that should be used with other type of analysis, whether that is technical, whether that is fundamental, okay? Talking about fundamental analysis, I'm very happy to announce that the new module, the new chapter, uh, about fundamental analysis and financial economics is now available in the FX Pro Trader program. Literally, all the information are on the link that is just below in the description. So, to start with, what is a moving average? So, as you can see on this chart, we have the actual price, which is shown in the candles, but we also have lines which follow more or less the price. Okay, we have this one, this one, this one and this one okay so these are moving averages so moving average is the most popular technical analysis tool there is in fx trading and it's generally used in order to identify trends okay so what is a moving average as the name indicates okay it's just the average price movement of a certain period so what you need to understand when you look at an indicator such as a moving average is that there's three components first of all the type of moving average you're looking at so we'll look at for instance the simple moving average exponential smooth so that's the type of moving average then the period so that's the amount of candles you're taking into consideration okay so if i'm taking a period of seven we'll be looking at the average of the last seven candles okay now the last component is obviously the time frame because we're looking at the period so the candles uh, if we're looking at a one hour chart and we are looking at the seven previous candles then we're looking at seven hours an average of the last seven hours of prices okay now if we are on a daily chart obviously we're gonna be looking at a, the average of the seven latest days, okay? Which is very different. So these are the three main components of a moving average that sadly a lot of people just ignore and sometimes don't even know. So as I said in this video, we're gonna study the simple moving average, okay, which is the most common, the exponential moving average, which is used a lot in trading, and the smooth moving average, which is the moving average I personally use for my personal trading. So let's start with the simple moving average. So this is a simple moving average of a period of 50, okay? Uh, every single moving average will look, we'll look at 50. So how do you calculate this? What does it really look like? So the simple moving average actually calculates an average of the last period. So in that case, 50. So if we were looking at the actual maths, I'll put that for you. Um, so we have the simple moving average. So it's equal to the price of the first candle. So the 50th candle in that case, because we're looking at a moving average of a period of 50. Okay. How do I know this? Uh, actually, uh, by going right here, settings, and you can see inputs, I can choose the length. And here I chose a length of 50. Okay. However, let's go back. So it's the price of the first candle plus the price of the second, plus the price of the third, plus the price of the fourth, etc. until the price of the 50th candle. Okay, we're looking at all the candles. So all of this obviously divided by 50, which is the period. Why? Because this is just a simple math calculation of an average, okay? So if we look at the latest price of the simple moving average, which is 0 0.74454, we can see that basically it is the last 50 candles. So we can look at it like this. So we can count the bars. This is 50 bars. So it's basically all these candles. You make an average of all of them with no weight on specific price or a specific candle, okay? And this gives you an average right here, okay? That's the average of the last 50 closing price, okay? When we're looking at moving average, we're also looking all the time at closing prices. So in that case, the blue candle is obviously the closing price is higher because it's a blue candle or green, whatever and the red one would be down there, okay? Now, when using simple moving averages, which period should you use? Okay, so as I said, the period you can change right here. Which periods should you use? So the most common uh, simple moving averages are eight, okay? Eight, 20, 50, 100, and 200. So these are the most widely used, and generally speaking, the more moving averages used, 
the more significance it will have because a lot of traders are looking at it so it's a very important indicator just like a round number for instance where if price reaches 1.5 spot um, a lot of traders will know that 1.5 there may be orders there because a lot of traders are looking at this very specific number now let's study another moving average which is the exponential moving average okay so i'm just going to add it right here so it's the blue one and so an exponential moving average really the difference between the simple moving average and the exponential moving average so you've had to explain the difference between a simple moving average and an exponential moving average to put it very, very simply is that the exponential moving average actually takes recent prices more into consideration than past prices remember that the simple moving average we are literally looking at certain price plus the next one plus the next one plus the next one divided by the total number of periods okay in the exponential we are putting more emphasis on the recent prices so the formula of the exponential moving average is quite a bit more complicated than the simple moving average so to put it very simply if we look at for instance the latest price of it we just know that let's say we were looking at the period of 10 which goes from so this candle to here okay so to this large blue candle we would see that this candle has more importance than that one in the price calculation in the average this one is more important than that one that one is more important than this one than this one than this one and the 10th candle is the least recognized has the least power to calculate the average okay so that's cool but what does it actually translate to in terms of trading why would someone use an exponential moving average so the exponential moving average of course will react to what the price is doing more quickly because it takes into consideration the recent price action and we can actually see it here okay so we can see that we had an uptrend okay remember that we also use generally people use moving averages to spot trends okay but we can see that here when price really plummeted down and the trend changed okay when we broke that trend line the trend changed you can see that the exponential moving average which is in blue reacted quicker than the simple moving average okay it reacted quicker and it went down much faster than the smooth moving average okay so if you're looking to add a moving average which will react to current prices more than the past one then the exponential moving average is the one you will want to go for okay as i said moving average is not a strategy a moving average is an indicator that you should add to your strategy which is made of fundamentals which is made of technicals which is made of different confluences so the moving average you are using really all depends on you what you are looking for what do you want this indicator to indicate to you okay so this is the exponential moving average now before going any further one thing i'd like to note which i'm sure most of you would understand but i just prefer to clarify it is that obviously if you change uh, the period of an exponential moving average or a normal moving average the higher it goes the less accurate it's going to be okay if we look at let's say an exponential moving average of five we will see that the exponential moving average is very closely linked to what the price is doing because it's calculating the average of the last five candles okay now if we're looking at a period of 500 which is another extreme then you'll see that the exponential moving average is very far from the price because obviously we're taking an average of the last 500 candles now i just showed you this on the exponential moving average but of course that works on the simple moving average also and to the smooth moving average which is the moving average we're going to see now so let's look at the smooth moving average so it's this one so it's the red one i just added so we know that a simple moving average the price data has an equal weight um, on every single period okay so if we are looking at a period of 50 which is the case here the 50th candle is as important as the recent candle now we know that the exponential moving average recent candles are more important than the 50th candle now the slight difference there is with the smooth moving average so when looking at the smooth moving average so the smooth moving average is this one the red one it's it's also a period of 50 in that case okay so if we look at the simple moving average we know that we are calculating with equal weight each price of periods okay so if we are looking at the period of 50 the 50th candle is as important as the most recent candle okay that's the mathematics behind it also in a simple moving average we know that when we go to a next candle okay let's say we're looking at a four hour chart here the four hour has passed and we're now on another candle well there's going to be a new valuation for the simple moving average and the 50th candle of the previous candle is going to be cancelled it's going to be removed because we're still looking at a period of 50 and not a period of 51 if that makes sense so the 50th candle candle that was there previously we're not looking at it anymore and it's now the new 
50 laser candles. And this is the main difference there is between simple moving average and smooth moving average, is that the smooth moving average, as the word smooth illustrates, uses longer period to determine the average, okay? So similarly to an exponential moving average, we are seeing more weight on the current price rather than the past price, However, we are not stopping at the 50th candle, okay? Mathematics, the calculation behind it, actually takes into consideration all the previous candles, but obviously at a very minimal, minimal rate, okay? But that just shows that the smooth moving average will be slower, okay? Even though, in a way, it's calculated similarly to the exponential, however, it takes into consideration more than the period you've actually chose. So in the smooth moving average, the old price data is actually never removed. It's always there. It's minimal, but it's always there. For the smooth moving average, also called the SMMA, is the one I personally use to actually know the formula for this one. But if we look at it that way, it would give you, so literally the same as the simple moving average, okay? So it's the price of the one, plus the price of two, price of three, price of four, etc., until price of the 50th candle, okay? Minus the previous smooth moving average value, okay? So we'd call this SMA, um, basically N minus one. So that would be not the current one because the current one we are obviously calculating right now, but the one which was just before, okay? So if we look at it, I'll show you later, but so this. So it's all this calculation divided by the period we chose. So in that case, that was 50, okay? And by the way, this we could actually look at it as 49 because it's the previous period, okay? Uh, if that makes sense. So essentially it's the simple moving average. We're making the 50, the average of the 50 latest candles, but the latest one, we are subtracting it, okay? And then dividing it by obviously to make the average, okay? So you see that by adding this one, we always have data from the candles that were before because this candle actually has data from this one, which was from this one, which was from this one. And this is why the smooth moving average actually reacts to the price less than the exponential, okay? So the most reactive one, let's say, would be exponential moving average, then we'd have the simple moving average, and then the smooth moving average. Now, the reason why I personally use a smooth moving averages is because essentially what it does is that it removes the short-term fluctuations, okay, we're not seeing the short-term fluctuations in that moving average, but rather it leaves us the view of the prevailing trend um, there is. And that's why I personally use SMMA, so smooth moving average, as support and resistance levels, okay? So here's, for instance, an example of the use of the smooth moving average where it actually acts as resistance, okay? As we can see, if we take the pen, we can see that right here was respected, here respected, respected. And every time price reaches that level, okay, and you can see that when we had this huge drop happening on Euro Swiss, the smooth moving average didn't go after the drop, okay? It didn't react instantly simply because it's a smooth moving average. So it smoothes out the price and it doesn't react as much to the current price fluctuations, okay? Right here also works, okay? Right here we had a break, an actual break, and we're coming for a retest of these levels. That's why I'm saying that I use, personally use smooth moving average as a support and resistance. So looking at this, we could say that we are seeing a shift in trend, okay? We were seeing lower highs okay and at that moment the lower highs were broken and right now we have this impulse and we are in a correction phase again we're probably looking at something like this and price could go back up i don't know um this is just a very quick analysis as i said again uh, if you're using smooth moving average it's good however you need many many other things in terms of technical in terms of fundamentals here would i buy euro swiss just based on this no Maybe I'll look into it to actually buy it and see if there's other reasons to. This is at the end just an indicator, okay? So I hope you understood in this video that you need to use moving averages depending on the way you trade and what you want the indicator to indicate to you. Are you more interested in the recent price fluctuation or more on the past price fluctuations? Do you need a lot of data? Do you need short data depending on the period you are using, depending also on the time frame? okay? So I really did this video for you to totally understand the different aspects of a moving average in order to use it correctly. So I'm sorry that in this video I haven't told you the best moving average and the best strategy if you use this moving average you'll get a hit rate of 90% because at the end of the day that's not how it works. The moving average is an indicator if you use it and you know what you're looking at what it indicates what it actually means how you can tweak it 
then you can really do some cool things with them. But yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and also let me know down in the comments if you have any questions whatsoever. You can also send me a message directly to Instagram, which appears right here. I usually check all my DMs, so I'll respond to you as soon as I can. Down in the description, you'll also have all the important links, which are, for instance, my program, my different social medias, etc. But feel free to check this out. I post a video here on YouTube every single Sunday about trading, finance, investing. So if that's a subject you actually like, you actually enjoy, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I wish you an excellent rest of your day. It was Elliot. Peace.